There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's see if our speed or lock side. to unite with this cosmic intelligence that's part of their destiny. If they can't do it because it's being, it has been given up by the person, the spiritual being that was head of the cosmic intelligence, that's Michael, he let it go. It fell from his lap to be received by humanity, but also these harmonic beings are he says, akin to this intelligence, but they take it up and transform it into this, the incalculable to a calculable. And so these elemental beings who could help us are going to have to form a union with spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings. They would love to do that with humanity. But if we can't take up cosmic intelligence for them, then they will have to take up earthly intelligence with our own mind. Okay, so we can, by, by making the relationship and uh, honoring, mm -hmm. we yeah. help that. We help that. Uh, yeah. Process it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be nice. Be nice to your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah be nice to your car. Is it a computer? Computer. Yeah. The former car. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, I was just thinking if they're connected to the different areas, like if one is connected to our thinking, and we become conscious about what we think and are those nourishing thoughts for somebody else or not. Are we having good emotional feelings that they can be nourishing to those mm -hmm. elemental beings or not? Like, we take responsibility towards them through that we know they're connected to our real self mm -hmm. that we use. Mm -hmm. So that's where we have that connection right. towards them. And if we totally give up, then they say, we're going to come and find something else. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to try it. Yeah. I saw a really, really fun experiment in, um, on a movie that's called I Am. Mm -hmm. And they put yogurt in front of a person, and they put a, measuring, um, a measuring stick in, and it was connected to a device that could um, show frequencies of activity. And they had a conversation, it's like an interview, and the person interviewing the other person with the yogurt in front of them, asked him a very personal question, and suddenly the yogurt rocked up because it was such an emotional theme to that person. Yeah, and yeah. it really showed that what we experience has an impact on our surrounding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How we are, are we caring, are we not? What do we let go of? And I was so cool to see, I was just kind of, ooh. Mm -hmm. again, like, what are we here? we started to impact the yogurt, which is like a machine that it's starting to rock. It's like, oh, what is going on? Yeah. Well, you can see it with Keeley. You mentioned Keeley mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. I mean, he played the violin, and he connected himself with whatever he was connecting, and, and then something happens that otherwise doesn't happen. I mean, they already know. I mean, there are lots of people who are trained already now, uh, uh, you know, to, to influence all kinds of things just that way. Of course, you can use it for good or you can use it for evil, of course. Right. And speaking of good and evil, um, this, however, does not tell us much, for it does not express the fact that the modern explanation of nature set out along a path that really unites it with evil. Okay, so this rounds out what we were talking about earlier. When we listen to a modern physicist blandly explaining that nature consists of electrons. We merely listen to him explaining that nature really consists of little demons of evil. Mm -hmm. And if we acknowledge nature in this way, as being comprised of atoms and electrons, we raise evil to the rank of the ruling world divinity. Well, it's like telling a lie. I mean, you refine your concepts, and if, I mean, that's a concept too. And, and if, if the concept isn't clean, well, then, of course, it has to go the other way. So I think that's why Steiner did the philosophy of freedom, so that we know how to think and, and, and watch how we think so that we can figure this out. 
So that's good stuff. <laughs> so um, again, this electricity as a carrier of evil, the good and evil forces in man could be, to a great extent, uh, influence the health and wellness and, or illness of other people and consequently also of birth and death. And in the uh, previous Paka, it was a problem of birth and death. Um, and it's interesting, Paul Everson brings up the spirits of birth and death in his current book. Um, and so I, I have a whole chapter in the book I'm going to write on, on these spirits of birth and death. I don't agree with him on how they are manifesting. But um, in our epic, though, we will have to struggle with evil in the same way that the previous one struggled with birth and death. So that's our struggle. We won't conquer it, just as they didn't conquer. God had to come in and conquer death. This is something, though, our dealing with evil will, will take a long time. And um, the forces of good will have to grow out of the opposition to evil. So he's starting to answer this question, why does the good God give us evil? The forces of good will have to grow out of the opposition to evil. We will draw the strength for this opposition out of spiritual sources, not out of the physical. During the fifth art period, when the exploitation of electric forces, which will assume quite different dimensions from those which they have assumed so far, will enable man to spread evil over the earth, and hence lead to this war of all against all, evil will evade, invade the earth by coming in an immediate way out of the forces of electricity. And so this is why Paul Emerson wants to avoid it. But he says, anthroposophy, if it were to adopt a fanatic attitude, it could go out there and thunder against electricity in the modern civilization. And he says, that's nonsense. That's not the For way. only world concepts that do not reckon with reality can speak in that way. And they may say, you know, it's our harmonic, let's avoid it. And he says, we cannot shut our eyes to the fact that we must live with our harmonic, but we must not live, we must not live with him. Sorry, we must live with him in the right way. That is to say, we must not allow him to have the upper hand. Again, this picture of us coming to be able to stand on him. We don't kill him, we don't ban him we are able to stand on. So when electricity is used, wherever it's used, there is demonic magic. But demonic magic, he says, signifies progress, and we can't oppose progress. So illusion itself in our times, Maya, will be seized upon by evil. Oh my goodness, does this sound like Snyder foresaw virtual reality? And it will permeate be permeated by cleverness and intelligence, yeah. the human being. Sorry? I'm amazed. It's a perfect description. Yeah, it's a perfect description. The human being can only come to spiritual freedom by growing strong against the resistance provided by evil. And human beings will have to accustom themselves to regard the inrush of the forces of evil in the same way we regard the inrush of the very laws of nature. We will learn to know that what lives and moves and thereby in the depths of things. We won't get to know these things otherwise. And we have to get to learn to know the, the depths of things. So we must not regard evil from the outset as one world who in fullness of his, as one would, sorry, that world. We must not regard evil from the outset as one would who in the fullness of his egoism merely wanted to get away and flee from it. So here's that scene sort of gesture. We cannot do so, but we must penetrate it with consciousness. We must learn to know it, really learn to know evil. Above all in our time, already a force is preparing in the realm of the human being, a force which tends to create illusions that are harmful and destructive, such as virtual reality. And so, 
goes on to say, what is now your inner life becomes that outer. So you saw that lemniscate I drew before. What is inner becomes the outer world. And what is the outer becomes our inner world. And there's many of these lemniscate crossings depending on what aspect of the human you're looking at. And so we have lots more to cross. But electricity is one that is move, has been moving the image of what it was on our inside is now moving outside. So what we ourselves prepare and make ready in the world, that is what will constitute our future existence. So when we start talking about Jupiter, or even the last seventh epoch, these sorts of things will come about. And what we do with the mineral world, with the plant world, and with the animal world, and indeed with men themselves, that we shall surely become. So he gives an example, if you found a charitable organization, or have contributed something to its foundation, what you have contributed will become an integral part of what you are in your inner being. What you put out there will become your inner. So he talks about artists, he goes on to talk about sculpture work and that kind of stuff, that you're putting things out there. And yes, you're, you are expressing how you feel about the world, but that's important as well, that you can change it through your art. And you're changing your future inner life by doing that. So um, I need to stop. I'm 10 minutes over. Um, uh, so is there something you can do when you're in relationship with technology? Can you say a prayer? Can you say a yes, you a can. Or yes, of course. Reading? Yes, yes, all of those. I, I just want to say one thing about sensitivity to electromagnetism, because people are going to bring this up a lot, and, and I needed to cover it in this session. I mentioned to some of you, um, uh, over two years ago, I got Lyme disease. And I had to uh, go on doxycycline, and it, you can say, literally cleared out my lower intestines. So there was no flora of fauna left. It just destroyed it. And six months later, I started getting intense headaches. Mm -hmm. Science is beginning to admit that there is some connection between the gut and the brain. That's exactly what Steiner knew this that, long ago. That's exactly what Dr. Seneff said when I filmed her on on, oh, on Thursday. Yeah. Have a look at that lecture because the gut and the brain. Are connected. I mean, we didn't have the term brain fog ten years ago. Right. So when we talked about light, whoever brought that up, um, you know, he's bringing it up because in part, potatoes. He says, can't be fully digested in the digestive system. That something from that goes on and needs to be digested in the brain, and that can give one headaches. Um, also makes so, you look dumb. Pardon? Also? Makes you a little bit dumb. <laughs> makes you a little dumb, OK. I wonder that's what's going on with me. Because right, um, it's not a real. It's not old age, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Because it's, it's, it's a stem. It's not, not a tuber. It's not a root kind of thing. Right. No, no, no. Potatoes specifically might be dumb, so you're saying? Well, <laughs> potato eaters. I think that with a grain of salt, it's uh, dumb might be too strong a word. I, no, I think, I think um, to, to put it in a nutshell, is um, the Irish were inundated with potatoes, potatoes right. all the time, to dumb down their spirituality because they still had the, the connection to the spirit. And, and, and right. they wanted to make sure that that stops. Right. Eat lots of potatoes. And lots of alcohol. Yeah, lots of alcohol. Yeah, both of it will work. Yeah, these spiritual streams that Marianne just brought up, if you saw spiritual history in the light of the way she just put it, it is one tragedy after another. Yeah, it's yeah. much worse than anything you see consciously today. But, um, but we learn. It makes me sad to say but that. We learn, sorry, but, but we learn. But we learn. And now I don't even remember where I was going. You were talking about your gut. Your gut. Oh, yeah. So yes, 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 Lyme yes. disease in my gut from the doxycycline. And six months later, these headaches started. Nobody could figure out what was going on. And I went from doctor to doctor to doctor until I finally got to the premier doctor of headaches, 